Tonight, I'm going to deal with scientific Pan-Africanism. And what is scientific Pan-Africanism? Scientific Pan-Africanism fundamentally is about, as the brother Shaka so eloquently explained, it's about looking at our ancestors, those forerunners, those pioneers that laid this foundation, Pan-Africanism, and what they brought. It's about looking at that systematically and extracting the best that they have and trying to fuse the best together to bring about a system. The reason why we need to have a system is because we're up against the system. <clears throat> Pan-Africanism is the same as scientific Pan-Africanism. Oftentimes, people think that I'm trying to say that this is something different. It's not necessarily different. What I'm saying, what I'm attempting to do is to elevate it. I'm trying to systematize the total way of life and to the point that there is a system that guides us. Tonight, thought and practice. I say thought and practice because I want to deal with scientific Pan-African thought and scientific Pan-African practice. I want to deal with it that particular way because there is a struggle going on and the struggle that's being waged right now is a struggle to suppress and stomp out our humanity as a people. It's being launched systematically, it's being carried out systematically. And we need to understand that. And as men and women that's engaged in this struggle for the liberation of African people, we need to have some type of understanding as to how we should be thinking and how we should be um, behaving. Our practice, what type of practice should it be? That's why I say thought and practice. Scientific Pan-Africanism is the systematic practice of integrating and synthesizing the philosophies, methodologies, and ideological perspectives of Pan-African practitioners. It seeks to demonstrate their continuity of thought from Sylvester Williams to Seko Touré, from C.R.R. James to Kwai Nkrumah. There's a continuity of thought, even down to the day. It's a continuity of thought. We need to be able to identify that because there is not a fragmentation. From Marcus Garvey, to Thomas Sankura, Kenneth Kaunda, Amir Cabral, want to demonstrate how there's a continuity in their thinking and how it comes down to us and how we can look at that and take the best of each of them, the best, and synthesize that best to create this system that I speak of. The note I want to read from Thomas Sankura. He was instrumental in leading a revolution in 1983 in the, the African country known at the time as Dupa Volta. You know, he led this revolution and, and re renamed it to Burkina Faso. Which means, land of the upright people. Yes. Right. Very well, brother. Land of white people. He says, the, the imperialism we are fighting is not an isolated thing. It's a system. As revolutionaries from a dialectical point of view, we should understand that we too should have a system. Right. You have to counter a system with a system, an organization with an organization, not simply individuals full of goodwill, good sentiments, good honesty, good intentions, and good generosity. We see too much of that. Good intentions is okay, but we are up against a system there is time for us as a people to create a system composed of fundamental parts to make this system up. Going into the thought aspect of what I want to talk about, I want to elucidate on four aspects of scientific Pan-African thought. Now, I'm not saying this is the thought process in its totality, but it's these particular four aspects I want to highlight tonight. The reason why I chose these particular four because I find that within the community of the individuals that are seeking to elevate and advance our people, I find that they are lacking in this area. And we cannot be lacking in this area if you're going to make some significant change for African people. The first aspect is our thinking to be study-oriented. We should be study-oriented. And what do I mean by that? I mean, Study oriented is a mindset geared towards and understand the necessity of study. By extension, study oriented is a mindset that values and places great emphasis on systematic study. Moreover, to be study oriented is to be study prone and study inclined. The thought of systematic study is a dominant thought within your mind. We too often say this right here. Well, 
I'm ready to do something. They talk too much. They want to sit around and read these books. That's the reaction on. Because the oppressors sit around and plot and plan your oppression. You, you never found the oppression saying, man, let's just run out here and do something. The oppression had, the oppressor had enough sense to know that he needed to study how he was going to implement oppression. And if we were going to reverse it, you had to study. You cannot heal symptoms in an ill if you do not study the symptoms and the ills to find out what caused it. You will not heal it. You will not heal these dysfunctional communities if you do not understand anything about what caused that dysfunctionality that exists in the communities. You have to study. And anyone that's professing to be about Pan-Africanism that does not study, it's not about Pan-Africanism. And I can say that and I stand on that. That is a standard that must be established. You must be about the business of studying if you're going to liberate people. It becomes null and void if my actions are not motivated by the well-being of African people. Has to be. That's people oriented. When I read, I'm reading for African people. When I go to school, because I don't like college, I go to college for African people. It's people oriented. it. No longer are we going to allow a person to come before us to say I'm a Pan-Africanist, I'm black nationalist, but yet they're anti-social. You ain't African anti-social because anti-socialism is not a part of African culture. So if you haven't overcame that yet, you have to become a student. Become a student. If you haven't conquered that yet, become a student to be a Pan-Africanist because Pan implies all. It implies all, all embracing and all inclusive. And if you're anti-social, how are you for the all? If you're afraid to socialize with your own people, become a student. That's the standard. Become a student. Let those of us who are prepared to deal with our people, deal with our people. No more just good intentions, because our good intentions have gotten us nowhere. We're not in the early time where our good intentions are enough. They're insufficient in 2011 and beyond. 50 years ago, good intentions was OK. Not today. The last aspect of scientific thought is solution oriented. Because a lot of us can talk about the problems all day long, right? We know that. We do that a lot. We complain a lot and talk about the problems. This and this is that. Black people don't do this and black people don't do that. And, and we always yipping and yapping about something, right? But we don't have any solutions. No solutions. So I say, Part of the thought process of scientific Pan-African practitioners is that we must be solution-oriented. You have to be solution-oriented. That's the standard. Judges by it. Solution-oriented is a mindset geared towards discovering and developing solutions. A resolution-prone mindset. Therefore, thought and solutions is the underlying current of all thoughts. This type of mindset conceives in terms of solutions. Thus, to render meaningful solutions for its people, African people, is a constant thought. A constant thought. You don't sleep. You don't sit around and watch a bunch of bull crap on the television. You're thinking about how you're going to render a meaningful solution for your people. Because there is enough problems for all of us to play a part in coming up with a solution. There's enough work for all of us to do. There's enough work for us to do. But the key to, to be able to come up with solutions is you have to study. You have to study. And you can never stop studying. That's another mistake we make in a quote unquote conscious community. You know? We read a couple books, do a couple events, get some years on our belt, and we don't study no more. We believe the situation remains the same. That's what we believe. We don't even understand that nothing remains the same in this universe. We don't really understand that. Nothing remains the same, you know? Even though we are still an oppressed people, but the oppression, it constantly modifies itself. So you have to constantly study the works of our masters who understand us, and you pull from that, and you utilize the lessons that you learn therein, and these lessons becomes your tools of application so you can become a healer of your people. But you will never heal if you are afraid to study. 
when you stop studying, you're no longer relevant. And you wonder why you don't no longer do the things you once done. Because you stopped studying. You cut yourself off and you're becoming obsolete. Once you've started studying, and once you say you're on this path, you can never stop studying. Marcus Garvey said, study history incessantly. Incessant means continuous. He said this in the 20s. Study history incessantly. You can never stop studying. Because your enemy doesn't stop trying to attack and kill you. So you have to constantly study. And you got to do it collectively. Be about the work. Be about the service. Connect the two together. The theory and practice. But we have to be about the work. But the work must come after you've done the studying. You must study first, then act. You can't act without studying. If you do, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. You're gonna cause a lot of confusion if you do it that way. A lot of times we feel like, well, man, when we die, man, bubbles dying in the street, man, bubbles getting locked up, man, people hungry, man, you know, we, we gotta do something, we gotta do something. Understand one thing about warfare, because we are in a state of warfare. Oppression is always a state of war. Understand that very clearly. Oppression is, in fact, a state of war because oppression is imposed after aggression, transgression. Cultural aggression is a state of war. Whenever you have a war-like situation, you're going to have two things. You're going to have casualties of war, and you're going to have collateral damage. And I say that to, to say this right here. A lot of us are going to die in those streets while we're trying to get it together. But that's just a price that has to be paid right now because we got to get some things together first before we can go out there and be of some meaningful assistance. We got to understand what we're up against and how we're going to proceed. It's going to be some cows and somehow people are going to die, yes. There's going to be some collateral damage, yes, it's going to be that. And it hurt me to my heart. Every time there's a death, every time there's a shooting in our community, I'm disturbed by it, I'm hurt, I'm moved by it. I don't feel good by it. There's a lot I would like to do, but I understand as a conscious black man, a conscious African, we have to be organized. Right. We have to understand what we're going to do. You don't just run. You don't just act off emotions. We're not reactionaries. There's a difference. Scientific Pan-Africanism is not a reaction to anything. It's calculated and well thought out. It's an action against everything. There's a difference. It, it understands that a system of aggression exists in this world against us. It understands that. And it has its offensive, defensive mechanisms to deal with that system. But it does not react. It's calm. It's calculated. It's cool. But it's precise. <laughs>